DARPA Dreams of Sending Humans to the Stars Alpha Centauri or BUST The government agency that helped invent the internet now wants to do the same for travel to the stars. In what is perhaps the ultimate startup opportunity, DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, plans to award some ambitious and starstruck organization roughly $500,000 in seed money to begin studying what it would take organizationally, technically, sociologically, and ethically to send humans to another star, a challenge of such magnitude that the study alone could take a hundred years. The awarding of that grant on 11-11-2011 is planned as a culmination of a year-long DARPA NASA effort called the 100-Year Starship Study, which started quietly last winter and will include a three-day public symposium in Orlando, Florida on September 30th on the whys and wherefores of interstellar travel. The agenda ranges far beyond rocket technology to include such topics as legal, social, and economic considerations of interstellar migration, philosophical and religious concerns, where to go, and perhaps most important, how to inspire the public to support this very expensive vision. The DARPA plan has generated buzz as well as befuddlement in the labs, pubs, diners, and websites that ring NASA centers both physically and virtually where the dream of space travel has never died and where a few stubborn bands of scientists and engineers fueled by science fiction dreams and prophecies are designing spacecraft that could cross interstellar space incubating a technology and preserving it for the day when it will be used. If you want to have a hobby why can't it be designing an interstellar spacecraft, said one who directs Project Icarus, a worldwide volunteer effort to design a spacecraft that could carry a scientific probe to a nearby star, perhaps Alpha Centauri, 4.4 light years from here, in a trip that would take less than 100 years. This is what we do, said Louis Friedman, former executive director of the Planetary Society in Pasadena, California which bills itself as the world's largest public space organization. Many scientists wonder if life, especially intelligent life, exists beyond Earth. Someday, the interstellar dreamers vow that life out there will be us. Yes, it's humankind's destiny or fate to populate the stars, the galaxy, and the universe in the future. They say the technology already exists or will soon exist to send instruments and perhaps even people to nearby stars, although a human flight could cost trillions of dollars. The half million dollars DARPA will award is not enough to build a starship or even buy a modest office in which to imagine one, but it is enough to start serious fundraising and perhaps to invite ridicule from critics of government spending and actual human launching could be at least a hundred years or more away, and barring the invention of Star Trek-like warp drives, could take additional centuries. In other words, whoever goes on such a journey will not be coming back, but there are plenty of reasons that humans will eventually summon the political wheel to make the trip, scientists say, if not for human restlessness that has taken us out of caves and across the oceans, then to escape being wiped out when perhaps killer asteroids appear or the sun boils the oceans which it will do in a couple of billion years. Another lure would be discovery of a habitable planet elsewhere, something that could happen in the next few years through the efforts of NASA's Kepler satellite and related astronomical efforts according to Jill Tarter at the SETI Institute in Mountain View, California who has devoted her life to the search for extraterrestrials. This could get real when we have an Earth analog as a destination, she said. David Nyland, DARPA's Director of Tactical Technology, is at pains to point out that the goal of his project 
is not an interstellar spacecraft, only a business plan for designing one. The search, he explained, is for an organization, presumably private, that can grow the interstellar vision without government help, carrying the load for the next 100 years, developing valuable technology offshoots the way investing in computer protocols enabled the internet. The time frame was inspired by Jules Verne, whose novel, From the Earth to the Moon, was published in 1865, 104 years before it came true. After this November, whoever it is will be on their own. We don't intend to carry it forward, Mr. Nayland added. DARPA hands the keys over to this entity, and we wish them well. Interstellar travel is a tall order. It would take Voyager 1, humanity's fastest artifact, now traveling 38,000 miles an hour relative to the sun, more than 70,000 years to reach Alpha Centauri, if it were headed in that direction. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, a group of physicists led by Theodore Taylor of General Atomics and Freeman Dyson of the Institute for Advanced Study proposed propelling a ship by the pressure waves from atomic bombs dropped one after another out of the back every three seconds. Such a spacecraft, they calculated, could reach Jupiter in a year. It would take hundreds of years to reach Alpha Centauri. The British Interplanetary Society used a more benign form for this propulsion idea. In its interstellar spaceship study, Project Daedalus, in the 1970s, their spacecraft would be powered by tiny thermonuclear explosions of deuterium and helium-3 with laser blasts. It would carry a 500-ton scientific probe to Bernard's star, 5.9 light-years away in about 50 years, reaching a top speed of 12% of the speed of light along the way. And that was the very first study that proved it's possible with knowledge we have now to travel to another star. In recent years, other virtual collaborations have joined the party. There are a variety of propulsion ideas. Among them are gigantic sails pushed by sunlight, or by powerful microwave beams and ion drives in which beams of high-energy particles do the propelling. Scientific probes could go sooner and cheaper. One professor recently pointed out that soon all the genetic information needed to reconstruct Earth's biosphere could be packed into something the size of an egg. Dispersed through space to different planets, such eggs could create homes away from home waiting for us. The new technology will be biological. He said it will make everything else obsolete. Anyway, for now, nobody knows what could come of the Starship effort. It would be naive to think we even know the right questions to ask. If you had asked Einstein or Marconi in 1910 to define a worldwide communication system for the common man, would they have come up with the iPhone? A call for ideas for the Orlando meeting drew hundreds of responses which were being sorted to decide who will get to speak. Dr. Tarter, the astronomer at SETI, will coordinate talks on where to go. She has received 50 to 60 proposals, which she called a mixed bag, some of which read like UFO reports. Maybe, she said, you have to be a little bit crazy to think about this seriously, she added. We've all read enough science fiction to be fundamentally optimistic about the possible outcome. Kelvin Long, a physics graduate student at Warwick University and member of Project Icarus, said that he had already thought about the floor plans, an organization chart, and even a Japanese garden in the backyard for a theoretical interstellar institute where the research for an interstellar trip could eventually be centered. A lot of us are quite young. We grew up hearing about the Apollo program, he said. We want to be part of a significant journey. We personally think we may be doing something important, driving humanity out to the stars. He quoted Arthur C. Clarke, the late writer of science fact and fiction who invented the idea of communications satellites in 
and helped found the British Interplanetary Society. If you believe something is possible, you can make it happen. Interstellar travel is a part of humanity's future destiny or fate. It is a part of a long-term vision. This too is another sign of the times, the end times, transition days, a time of extraordinary changes, happenings, and events. The old world must die in order for the new world to be born. Revelation chapter 21 And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for a husband. 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with humans, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, speak, for these words are true and faithful. 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is thirsty of the fountain of the water of life freely. 7. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Yes, it is time for the regeneration and for all prophecy to be fulfilled. Everything is connected, and everything is numbered. Things happen for a purpose. Everything that must change, must change quickly or rapidly, and for the better.